Hello everyone, welcome to the show. I'm Michael Kazilny. This is Tough Times Never Last, but tough people do. And I know a lot of tough people watch the show every week. I know because you come up to me in the street and you say g'day on our Facebook site. Um, and um, you know, this show has been going for quite a few years now. Um, and we've had some more than 250 lovely people on the couch. And what I like about the show, it's unrehearsed. We don't go through the stories, but everyone's very authentic in sharing their story. And the purpose of the whole show is to inspire other people who are suffering. Because as we know, it's a very, very pretentious world out there. Everyone's saying that they're happy and, uh, you know, everyone's putting their masks on every day. You hear these pretentious uh, mini conversations all day. How are you? I'm great. And how are you? I'm fantastic. But really, we know that's a whole lot, lot of garbage that a lot of people are suffering. So just be an open book and expose yourself. I know it's very... Um, difficult and hard to expose yourself sometimes because you think, what are those people going to think? But you know what? It's refreshingly honest when people come to me and say, look, Michael, this is, the way, this is the way it is. This is what I'm going through. This is why I'm going to court. Uh, on tonight's show, a lovely, beautiful lady, a, a beautiful soul, Taria. She's been through um, a difficult um, path in her life. Uh, two husbands, the first one, uh, incest with his daughter. Uh, then the second one was very violent and he died. Um, one of her brothers is in prison for murder. Um, and it all started with a uh, terrible alcohol problem. Taria, thanks for coming on. God Thank bless you. you. And so lovely to, um, for you to come and share. Thank you. Because as you know, there's so many people out there suffering in silence. That's right, yeah. A lot of people... Um, so down and lonely. Yes. They put on a mask and yes. a lot of them want to end this journey. Mm. And you tried to do that one time, sweetie, didn't you? Yes. When you were a teenager, I think you said you tried to take your life with pills. Yes, that's right. And that was because of your growing up. Tell us about your growing up, darling. Well, I grew up in a family with alcohol drinking, binge drinking and abuse from a father. He loved my brothers, but being the girl, he just couldn't handle it. And also because I had to do a lot of um, stand-ups for my mum, because he used to get stuck into my mum a lot. So I'd get out of bed and, you know, come between dad and mum. What did dad do for a job? He worked at Ford Factory and he worked at Gerard Springs. Yeah. And then he came home and what, had a, had a, a he'd six drink pack of every, beer? He'd drink, he'd go to the pub, the Palace pub, and drink. They say that he paid for every brick of that pub. Mm. So he actually had his wake at that pub. So he'd yeah. have big sessions every night. Yeah. Then obviously drink, drive home. No, he never drove. No? No, he could just walk because it was at the Flemington Flats. Well, so that's one good yeah, thing, but everybody yeah. was in fear, I suppose, when he came home. Well, only myself and mum. Mm. Yeah, the brothers, they weren't too bad, you know, so... And a lot of um, 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 people know when they're living with addicts, it's very difficult. We know yeah. once they're... Uh, you know, they can be so beautiful most of the time, but once they're pissed or on, uh, on drugs, we all try to hide, don't we? Yes. And it really is the devil's curse, isn't it? Because yes. um, uh, we see this behaviour, and, and he, he, you got beaten up quite a few times. Yes, I did. He even climbed out of the nine-storey window once on the outside ledge to try and get into my bedroom with a knife in his mouth. So mm. he was um, very violent with me at times, which created self-hatred in me. You know, I used to think, why doesn't he love me? He loves my brothers, mm. but he doesn't love me, you know, so it's was really Was there a reason uh, when he was uh, beating you, why? Uh, mainly because I'd get in between mum, you know, mm. at different times. A and, and what we do do, I remember when I was younger, I used to sort of get ch chased around with a wooden spoon or the belt and get a few... I'd get kicked in too when I was down. So much harsher, yeah. yeah. A, a lot of viewers probably uh, remember the wooden spoon or the, um, the belt and everything, and that's... Oh, the I belt. Suppose it's quite yeah. acceptable. We probably did yeah. muck up when we were younger, but but your, yours was uh, serious yes. physical blows and yes. violence, yeah? Yes, and he ended up throwing me out. So mm. as a young girl walking down with his small little suitcase, nine flights of stairs into the middle of the night. God bless so you, darling. Yeah. And, and you were saying that um, one stage you just had enough. You were sick and tired of making up excuses when you went to school because there was bruising there, yeah? Yes, yeah. Bruising. Oh, that was with my husband. 
practice, so I tended to follow the pattern. Oh, know. so yeah. so as a young girl, you said you were t trying to take pills, yeah? That's right. Became anorexic first through the self hatred in days when nobody knew what anorexia was. No. So it would have been 68, 69. Or so something. you just stopped eating? Just stopped eating. Just hated myself, hated my body, because Dad used to make very bad remarks about myself, mm. so it just brought on this self-hatred. Yes, amazing. so it was, a, it was very difficult emotionally. Yeah, you look know? at you now, you know, you've got such a good heart and uh, <laughs> you've got a foster Thank child you. and everything, but um, it's quite amazing how you turn all those times around. Yes. You, what time did you, uh, uh, Taria, what, um, how old were you when you left home? I was kicked out when I was 14. Mm. Mm. And then um, when did you meet your first husband? I met my first husband when I was 18. 18. Yeah. And I suppose what you were searching for, you were searching love. for love and security. Because yes. um, love is such, a, such an important yeah. thing, isn't it? I met this old lady not so long ago and she said to me in an American accent, she said, Michael, a, a life that is soon passed, only what's done with love will last. And that's so true, isn't it? Um, it doesn't matter if we get all the success and all the fame and all the dough in the world, if it's a, a, a life lived without love, it's a pretty empty life, isn't it? Um, you know, love is so important and it doesn't have to come from family. Sometimes we can't choose our family and, uh, you know, there might be incest, there might be uh, violence, there might be um, hatred. So sometimes we can find friends who supply that love, but give yourself a big hug tonight and, um, you know, own yourself and pull your own strings. And that's important, isn't it? Because yes, you were always, um, I searching. suppose, so insecure, you need someone to look after you. Yes. Your first husband, you had a, um, how many children? Two, two daughters, two beautiful daughters. Oh, daughters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and you were together for quite some time. No, only a few years because of the situation, yeah. Tell us about that very evil well, situation. Uh, he went, because Cindy was, um, she was the blonde, beautiful little girl, and um, he tended to like her in the wrong way. So yeah. she was your daughter between the two of you, yes, yeah. Yes. So yes. that's quite uh, disgraceful, isn't yes. it? Quite appalling. We see this yes. in the courts so much yes. incest, yeah. um, pedophilia. But um, how would you feel being a mother uh, and finding out your husband uh, has been having sexual intercourse with your daughter mm. or your son? But we'll talk about those very difficult times. Tario got through after the next break. Don't go away. And welcome back to the show. I'm Michael Kazilny. Thank you very much for the pleasure of your company. And just remember, you're an amazing and a beautiful human being just the way you are. The problem is in society, we all get molded, don't we? At school, don't do this, do this, don't do that. Then you get home, you get the same rules again. Then uh, university or apprenticeship, don't do this, don't do that. We're always being judged, reports, you know, Fs, Ds, not good enough. Always competing, always um, feeling lost when everyone else has get Bs and As. Um, and it appears we're always trying to put this mask on that everything's okay. And uh, we're always trying to be like others, carbon copies of uh, other carbon copies. Rarely does somebody come up to you and say, just be yourself, you're an amazing person. But viewers, you are, you're beautiful, just like the lady on the couch, she's a beautiful soul. Uh, a very difficult uh, roller coaster of a life. Um, grew up in an alcoholic family, and I always say alcohol, it's the devil's curse, isn't it? Every time I've been out on the piss after one o'clock, bad things happen, you know, if somebody wants to fight or, you know, and you see all the people down in the nightclubs uh, fighting and uh, violence. But this lady went through uh, hell. Her first uh, her father was violent and uh, alcoholic. Then um, she met a man looking for love and he ended up um, uh, being involved with her daughter and that caused the flow and effect of having a daughter who grew up uh, a life of depression. Um, that's difficult. When you found that out, you obviously said uh, goodbye, there's the door, that's, that's close it. it from the outside. That's right, yes. Yeah, how Never did you react? T tell us, darling. Sorry? What, what did you do? Um, when I found out. How did you find out? Um, through his mother. His mother? Mm. How did she know? Yeah. Um, she heard Cindy whimpering. And Cindy mm. never came to you? Uh, no, she did. That was the first time I ever knew and the last time because that was the end of that relationship. And what did you say to him? Um, 
I can't repeat that on air. No, I'm, I'm not, no, I'm not surprised. Mm. Um, and um, but karma got him, didn't it? <laughs> I always believe in karma, folks. You know, you can't go out there doing all this bad stuff, and uh, you know, if you're good to people, good stuff comes back. I mean, do nasty stuff. Is we're throwing the boomerang all the time, you know. And yes. um, he died, didn't he? That's right. Your yeah. first husband passed away yeah. in the back of a police divisional van. No, that's the second husband. That's the second. My yes. apologies. First husband died in a house fire because of his drinking. Yeah. So you split up. How many yes. years after you split up? Um, we were only together for three years. So it never got reported. He never went to jail, but probably because he felt so uh, guilty. But he wasn't never to have his children again. And alone? Yeah. So he started drinking even more? Yes. Yeah. Ended up in a psychiatric hospital for a while. Wow. Yeah. And then his house burnt down and... Yeah. Um, no. Yeah. What did you think when the house burnt down? Well, I'd forgiven him. I know that sounds hard, but through God, when I met God, yeah. I mean, I, I had to do a lot of forgiving. I Certainly. I did a lot of journaling to forgive. Mm -hmm. It's so difficult, but forgiveness yeah, is important. Yeah, because I can't give them the power anymore. No. Did you go you to the know? funeral, Dale? No. No. Then, how many years until the next husband, the violent husband? Um, that was about, oh, about five, six years. Yeah. When you first met this man, he must have been a beautiful yes, person. Yes, yes. Because, you know, to make Off that step world. again, you yes. must have thought, I love this oh, man. That's right. I thought, here comes my family. I'm going to have someone who accepts my two daughters because mm. Lisa was rejected totally by her father. Yes. Which caused her to become a binge drinker later on in life. But she's free now, thanks what to John. What attracted you to, to your second husband? What was the attraction? Um, the alcohol, I'd say. It's like I created this world. I didn't know at the time. No. But it was like I wanted to create this chaos and confusion and um, the alcoholic home was home. You're both as drinking, you're used to it. As strange as that mm. sounds. It was, it was um, normal. It was normal. Mm. That's exactly right. And, um, and I thought I could change him. I thought I could... Um, you know, I love him enough that he will change. And that's what usually so, happens in relationship, yeah. folks. You know, two people meet up and they've got something in common, like the grog. And what, when they're in that honeymoon phase, they, you know, yes. they go and party, they might go to the crown, or everything's great, and they might get drunk together and fall over. But once they're together for an extended period of time, that's when the anger creeps in because, you know, all the expectations of each other. And then, um, unfortunately, a lot of um, people start beating up on each other and yeah. violence takes over. And once violence is there, once it just continues on. Yes, that's Doesn't exactly it? right. Violence, it, it was a big shock mm. and it was what my children had to endure, which I have to live with every day, the consequences, even now. And so it was really did, hard. Tari, did he treat you in a similar manner to um, your father? Yes, and he looked similar to my father. It's bizarre. So it, it is bizarre, but it wasn't until... Because some people view a say, don't they? Um, uh, a lot of uh, ladies choose... Um, the man who reminds them of their father. Yes. It's strange, isn't it? It's a funny psychology. I can't get my head around that. No. Do you think that's true? Yes, I think... It, well, it happened in my case. Wow. You know, and not only once, but twice. What was his name? Know, Wayne. Wayne. How long together with Wayne? Ten years. Ten years. And we had a beautiful son. Wow. Um, David, yes. David's good? Yes, David's good now, yes. Wow. He has three beautiful children. Oh, yes, David is good and happy yeah. and with a video shop. That's lovely. No, that's my brother, Tommy. Oh, that's Tommy. <laughs> that's yes. Tommy. Yes. And, and your brother, your other brother, he, um, uh, he uh, turned into a life of alcoholism as well. And drugs, yes. And then he but got he, into a... He actually beat the alcohol, but the drugs were still there, yeah. What's his first name? Peter. And he was a good brother, wasn't he? He He's was a good boy. He's my little brother, baby brother. But, but he, he, was, he used to, when he was two years old, I'd catch him drinking the dregs around the floor, you know. He and he got charged for murder. He did, yeah. And isn't that amazing, folks? You see these little babies, you know, and, um, and it's just all that bringing up, that parental control and what they see and what they absorb. For a child, everything's so innocent, isn't it? It's a beautiful world. They just um, show loving kindness. And, and then you see the path, all of a sudden, young Peter... Drinks, 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 gets himself into a situation. Probably got a very good heart, Peter, he and has. then um, killed somebody and doing probably 17 years at uh, Barwon Prison. 17 years? 20, maybe. 20, 21, yeah. Maybe. See, that's so, a whole life. Mm. Do you visit sometimes? Yes. 
God bless you. Yes. Yeah. God bless you. Well, he's running around. <laughs> and all the best to all those people in prisons too. I know uh, there's a lot of good people in there and people who've made mistakes. And, um, and like he's sorry for it. Forgive yourself and move on. And, um, mm. and uh, everything always turns out just nicely. We just don't know when. Mm. Um, so the second husband then passed away. Yes, that's so right. So both of your first, uh, yes. karma got them. He passed away in the back of the divvy van. That's right. First Victorian. 1990. 1990. Yep. He made the front page of I the Sunday that. Sun. Yep. How, how did, why did he get taken away? Why was he in the divvy van? For drunk? Um, yes, but also he tried to take the life of my neighbour because oh. we got away. So he actually told her that I'm not going to die on my own. But she got away from that and they found him in the top of our roof. God. You might talk about that. That's, uh, that's shocking for the neighbours as well, isn't it? Mm, what an amazing that. story, folks. Uh, see, you, your problems are never that bad, are they? If we all threw our problems into the centre and found out what everyone else is uh, going through, we'd take our problems and run away. Don't go away. We'll be back very shortly. And welcome back to the show. We don't want to get you too depressed. People say, you're always so serious, Michael. No, we do cheer up sometimes. But uh, in my world, um, in the courts every day and before that in the police force, you know, I, I think I've seen too much. You know, when I was 17, no, 18 or 20, I can't remember, Hoddle Street, I attended Hoddle Street, um, one of the first units there when uh, Julian and I shot and killed those 17 people. Horrific stuff, you know, walking in pools of blood um, and uh, having to be there for almost two days at the crime scenes. Um, and that wasn't the last time I saw death and murder. I saw violent rapes. And um, down Frankston Way, where I grew up, there was um, the other chap uh, called Denya who killed those five beautiful young girls. Um, amazing, isn't it? So much violence out there. Then we, uh, everything was good for a while, but we had those two beautiful uh, girls in uh, Victoria killed recently. The, the girl from the ABC who went to a club and then walked home and got killed. You know, and then uh, only uh, a short time ago, that other beautiful girl. Uh, it's quite disgraceful, you know, um, how people can take other people's lives. That's one thing we can never understand, is it? Um, but, um, yeah, just be careful out there. Be careful. There's a lot of good people out there, but uh, some people just still don't get it. Yeah, that's so true, isn't it? You know, everything goes well, and then we look in the Herald Sun, and, uh, wow, mm, we, we hear of somebody sometimes. missing. Yeah. yeah. A lot of broken people out there, darling. Exactly. And you know what I lo love about you, Tario? You're, you're, you're so down to earth and honest. You said, Michael, yes, I was broken. I had um, alcoholism and um, uh, anorexia. And um, and it wasn't you who was broken. You, you just tried your, your, your best as a, right. as, you know, as a trying to get through all this. That's right. You do what you can with what you know, don't but you? But look yeah. at you now. <laughs> Many scars. <laughs> got a good bunch of mates. Yes, I have. Um, you know, and you a got good husband. Got a good husband. Yeah, That's great he's to hear. A beautiful husband. Oh, great. Yes. How did you find him? Well, uh, we both began a journey with God. Nice. As well. Um, and through that, through church, um, we received a lot of counselling. Good. Which obviously I needed to under to break the habit. It works. The same choices that I'd mm. made. Can you tell viewers that counselling works? Because a lot of people. Yes, it, it definitely works huh? work because it opens your eyes to why you do the things you do. Get some help, yeah. Yes, exactly. Mm. Talk to people. Journal. That's so right, folks. That's don't right. don't suffer in silence. Too many people yes. think, um, you know, especially the professionals. There a lot of broken people out there. You know, lawyers, right. doctors, professionals, business owners. They they think, oh, I can't tell anybody I'm depressed. Yeah. I shake those people when I see them. I say, I know you're depressed, yes. you know, I know what's going on. You're suicidal. Yeah. So uh, d forget about playing to the crowd and just uh, go, go and get some help. If yeah. you're going through some very, very difficult times at the moment, get some external help. You might see every week or every two weeks and just to talk through the problems. Create some happiness for yourself if you're not having any happiness at home. Might have an alcoholic family or being separated. Uh, then, then go and have some help. Join some groups. Toastmasters International are great. Public speaking. Rotary is great. The church groups are fantastic. That's um, right. And you know, and there's and you can find love amongst 
friends. Oh, exactly. Yeah? Like we've got brilliant pastors, you mm. know, and they understand, they empathise with us. They don't turn a, turn us away. They accept us from where we've it's come so from. It's so beautiful. I hear that, Taria, over yes. and over. And a yes. lot of people are so lonely out there. We're, you know, we're yep. living in such a populated city, but a, a lot of people get this... Um, social phobia because it is such a competitive world yes, and they yeah. might be a bit different so can you just remind people that uh, you know like a lot of groups are very accepting exactly i mm. mean you can get some groups that are judgmental but you've got to find the right ones mm. that are accepting and they definitely are out there and you can make some you great know? friends can't you exactly even like um, normal counselling through professionals. Yeah. They're absolutely brilliant. Brilliant. And then you've got your church people as well who can give you spiritual insight as well, which right. can give you that inner healing, mm. which I think, you know, that I found through prayer. That's fantastic. So, and the yeah. other thing which impressed me, Tori, about you is uh, you've got a foster child as well. Well, I've got per we've got permanent care of him now. Wow. What's yes. his name? His name is Jamie. Wow. Yes. How old's Jamie? Jamie's 13 now. Terrific. Yes, we got him when he was five days old. Wow. Yes. Both, both his parents have disabilities and oh. Jamie has disabilities as well. But challenging times. He's just got banned from the bus. <laughs> so. God bless you, darling. You've got such a good heart. Yeah. And folks, you know, the, the, the search for happiness. Everyone always says to me, Michael, hey, you know, we find happiness. I say, look, there's no need to be happy all the time. Like Anthony Robbins, all those American motivational speakers jumping around with joy. That's just a bunch of bullshit, really, <laughs> isn't it? I, I think once we find meaning in life, meaning or purpose, yeah. we can be content, but we don't even need to be happy, you know? Uh, meaning, and then just have those intermittent moments of happiness, you That's know? That's right, and to give back. Yeah. You know, you've got to, to give, give back. To give back is beautiful, to be yes. selfless, folks, yeah. selfless. And, and if you expect wonderful things to happen every day, just little wonderful things, you know, and, and you put that resistance down and you just go with the flow of the universe rather than it's all about me, look at me, you get into a conscious of here I am, you know, here I am. It's not all about you, it's, you know, just giving and show a bit of loving kindness. And just watch the miracles and, and, and the wonders, the people you run into and, you know, there's a lot of beautiful people out there, isn't there? That's right. I mean, I couldn't protect my own children. No. You know, but I can be there for them now. Yes. But, um, Jamie, so we can open up our home. That's lovely, to darling. Somebody else. It yeah. seems to me, you know, a lot of people are just always so busy chasing. They, you know, they're trying to get from one place to the next. There's road rage on the roads. That's right. People aren't acknowledging the other people. You know, it's such a short journey, this life journey, and um, there's little kindness, uh, not many smiles out there. But we should just slow down a bit and take our time to go the journey. But have a look around, have a look at the shops, the people are working there. Find out about other people's stories. That's always nice, isn't it? Yes, it is. Because if it's all about us and, um, and we don't give back, That's and all right. of a sudden we've got all this money. That's it, right. You know. I just want to say, too, that um, the power was taken away from me to drive because it was used as an instrument of torture, basically. Mm -hmm. And so just in the last few years, human services actually encouraged me to just sit behind a wheel and I believe that life is full of little challenges that we've got to meet every day you know I totally agree. just to do something you know that we feel or um, we don't want to let them reach from the grave and still have power over us mm. we want to set them free forgive them forgiveness, yeah. forgiveness is the big key God forgave us everything yeah. and so we need to forgive as well well, that's right. We had a lady, a lady here um, a couple of weeks ago, and she was saying, Taria, that um, her whole family uh, got um, killed at Auschwitz, yeah. uh, at the yes. prison camp, you yeah. know, and uh, her whole family got burnt. She could smell the human flesh yes. in the incinerator, and when she walked out, her whole family got wiped out by the uh, Nazis. Um, and she said, look, she knew every morning she had a choice to be unhappy and depressed or or she could be um, happy. Tari, I thank right. you very much for coming on. God bless thank you, you and um, for thank my you story. very much for sharing and um, inspiring other people. That's lovely. Thank and viewers, you. thank you very much for watching once again. If you've got an interesting story to share, please uh, take the time to check out our Facebook page, Tough Times Never Last. And I'd like to thank all the people helping on the show, the people um, doing courses, uh, Josh Marnie. Uh, for producing the show so long and uh, all the lovely viewers. Uh, love and best wishes. Good night.